And then you can see here the whole thing, how it just goes down. Horrifying. You can see vehicles right there. I mean, just absolutely horrifying. They only rescued two, and I think they were saying six or more are perished. So what's happening with this? I mean, are we looking at, and I would submit, we're looking at the consequences of anti-whiteism. Because even if there are uh, the pilots, the harbor pilots are white males, are you getting excellence? Once you take away hiring and promotion based on performance, you can no longer achieve excellence. And eventually you can't have competence. We see that in all areas. So uh, is it safe to assume at this point that lowered standards, uh, fewer checks and measures, things that would have been normal for Western kind if we were in charge of our destiny, are we witnessing a consequence of that? And are we indeed witnessing that across the West with these numerous accidents and these flaccid uh, responses to calamity? And I submit yes. I, I posit yes, that that is exactly what we're witnessing. So even if you get a white guy in a position in this age, in this day, are you, do you have the white guy who is the absolute best for the job and who has to maintain rigorous standards? Or do you have a white guy that was maybe picked for his sexuality? Do you have a white guy who was picked because he has a non-white wife and non-white children? Do you have a, a white guy, maybe just for all appearances, he is uh, he's a white guy, he's got a white family or whatever, but he's picked and he's in the role only because he's rabidly anti-white. So if that's a consideration, and which I submit that it is across the West today, how anti-white you are, if that's a consideration, then your ability to perform the job has to be something less. You hear anti-whites talk about this all the time. They're like, oh, oh, they just dismiss like doing the job. They're like, of course they could do the job. Of course they're up for it. We're just going to hire them on the basis of their race or sex or sexuality. But of course, it's like the job and your ability to perform it and your innate talents and the dues that you've paid and your record. Have you, have you set records or do you have a miserable record? at performing that type of job or other types or of similar jobs or throughout your life, the jobs that you've held, have they been substandard? So it's just taken as like a secondary or tertiary thing that, oh, you can go, of course I could do the job. Everywhere you talk to anti-whites, this is the response you get when it comes to diversity hiring, anti-white hiring. Every single time it's the, the job is secondary, and everybody can just do the job and from the job. It's like when I talked with that mayor here in Virginia. It's just like, well, everybody can do the job. And so therefore, we're going to pick people uh, on the basis of race and sex. And that's fair because everybody can do the job. As Of course, it's illogical. But these are the kind of consequences that are a result of this sort of approach. And I had another article that I was going to dig into today, but changed my mind about the CIA. And maybe I'll look at it at another point. But a guy just wrote a book, published a book about being in the CIA and actually walking through the headquarters here in Langley. And it's anti-whiteism in every room. Every poster is anti-white. Are you going to get like, we're making sure that we're respecting your choice of gender and every... Are you going, when that is a guiding principle uh, that, that functions as, as a principle of extreme importance for the, the mission of the entity, of piloting the craft through the bay, of operating international intrigue with foreign actors, as in the case of the CIA, are you going to be able to do that job as well when the guiding principle is something else?